Hello and happy Sunday. This is Kelly with ifyouhaveanegg.com and today is Sunday, December the 5th. We're eking ever closer to Christmas. So I know some of you all are celebrating Hanukkah right now. And um, shout out if you are. Let me get caught up with you here so I can see your comments. If you are new with us tonight, whoop, let me turn this down. If you're new with us tonight, please let us know. Please give us a shout out because we love to welcome new people. Um, hello, Georgia and Betty Ann. It is good to see you all. But yeah, this is another Sunday, super close to Christmas. We're um, on the home stretch, not really. Not really, we got 20 days left. So we got Alyssa, a little so many days till Christmas Grinch um, board at a craft show that Casey was at this weekend. And um, hopefully they changed it because it is 20 days. Now it was 21, we got it for Hello Alicia, Hello Lynn. Um, but again, hello and happy Sunday. I am Kelly, this is ifyouhaveanegg.com. Hello, John from Home Base. Um, yeah, so it's another fun Sunday. Hello, Carol Lou. The weather is fantastic here in East Tennessee. Hello, Trish. Um, and I, um, yeah, I'm to thank for that because I paid $2,000 to have the heat turned on at the shop. And it's been above 60 every day since then. Oh, well. Hello, Alicia. Hello, Tay from Buffalo, New York. Hello, Joyce is sneaking in. Hello, Carol from Surrey Bridge, Columbia. Hello, Gina. Hello, Sandra from Dingman's Ferry. So again, if you're new, let us know. Hello, Linda, who is jealous in Rock Island, Illinois. So I take it your weather's not good. I hear we've got bad weather coming. So I'm just gonna relish the moment now because it is it is going away quickly. And hello, Joyce. Um, so hello and happy Sunday, everyone. I know I already said this, but if you are new, please let us know. So I expect to have some new people tonight. Hello, Elaine. Um, this is a this is a funny time of year when people join Weight Watchers or WW. Um, I don't know, it just seems funny to me to join it right before the holidays, but it's actually the perfect time to join, you know, to kind of keep yourself in check, you know, and, and kind of get going, you know, kind of get ahead of things um, before the new year starts, because that's when everybody wants to join. So anyway, I think it's a great idea to go ahead and join and get some practice. And hello, Marianne from Pennsylvania. Lynn says it was 78 there today. Fantastic. But you know, it can't last forever. And hello, Myrna. I have missed you. How are you doing? Hello, Kathy from Ohio. Miss you and I miss your kitty cat. I was thinking about him or her the other day. Open oh, Alicia said it's 30 and snowing. Yeah, no. And hello, Kathy from Scranton. Um, but while you all are welcoming each other and saying hi and hello, I do have a little bit of, actually I've got quite a bit of WW news. Um, hello, um, Pam from Carson City, Nevada. I've got quite a bit of WW news and it's all things that is available to all of us. Hello, Sherry. Um, it's all things, oh, and I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving too. I forgot that was just last week. But I guess we've seen each other since Thanksgiving. Um, and we are on the fast track to Christmas. And I really would like to know who of you are celebrating Hanukkah because I would love to know how that is different. Um, I'd love to know. So some updates for no, um, for December, I almost said November, some updates for December um, for WW. Um, there's lots of news for December and it's lots of things in Heather Melinda, lots of things that you all could find on your own. But because I'm an inquisitive mind, um, I told somebody this weekend here at Casey Kitchen Center that I was nosy and they said, no, you're just inquisitive. So I have just, or curious. I can't remember if they said curious or inquisitive, but I have decided to call it that. So because I am curious or inquisitive, um, these are things that I noticed that, so they've already been available to everybody, but I'm just curious if you've noticed them. And hello, I keep saying Roberta, hello Roberta, and hello Sandy, Sandra from Naperville. Um, so the first thing is you can now join more than one challenge. I don't know if you've joined in, in Hello Marianne from Pennsylvania. I don't know if you've joined any of the challenges that are on your WW app. They are located under, um, if you go to the little icon that looks like a gift. So it looks like a package with a bow on the top if you go there and then go to Wellness Wins and then join a challenge. Up until now, um, you could only join one challenge at a time. And um, wait, Carol Lou says, we in Pittsburgh call that call people like that nebby. So I'm nebby. I have no idea what that means, but I guess I'm nebby. nebby. And Melinda says, curiosity is going to kill the cat. Luckily, I have nine lives, Melinda. But anyway, so you're going to go to join a challenge and then browse all of them. So up until now, you could only join one challenge at a time. And honestly, every time I started to join a challenge, I was like, I don't know, can I do that one this week? Maybe I can do that one. And I kept joining the same ones over and over again because I knew what my schedule was. So you can join more than one now and you get wellness wins for joining the challenges. Hello, Marlene. So that's a, that's a fun new um, announcement for WW. Also, I don't know if you've noticed it or not, but track food has changed. So if you go into the track food section, and hello, Sherry from Toledo, Ohio. If you go to the track food section, you can now, it's divided up into two sections. So now it's recents and lists. And hello, I'm Dixie, good evening to you. It's under um, recents, 
and lists. So it's divided into two things um, when you're tracking your food. And obviously, recents means food that you have recently eaten. Okay, that's what's going to be under recents. Um, but I mean, that's also handy though, because I eat almost, I eat, hello Evie, I eat the same yogurt almost every single day. And so it's, it's nice that you can go, um, you know, you can go and, and just pick the same thing over and over and over again, because I don't ever save it as like a meal. Hello Vicky from St. Louis. I don't ever save it as a meal, but it's nice to be able to go to that recent. So anyway, you can do that or you can go to lists and lists that you can make for tracking food. There are already a few in there, but obviously, you know, recent is recent, and list is a quick way to find your saved items. So if you don't know how to save items, there's this little flag thing. Oh, that's funny. I'm sorry, Carol Lou says, Nebby means nosy, curious, or inquisitive. I'm Nebby. I am Nebby. I'm gonna just think my, nickname myself that. But anyway, there's a little thing that looks like a flag or a little banner, like a little banner that would be hanging down. If you click on that, it's gonna favorite a food for you. Um, so it'll, you can pull up lists of favorited foods, saved, you know, like saved items, um, my food, so food that you have saved as my food, um, and scanned foods, anything that you've scanned, it also will pull up a list for your, your zero point food. So remember your zero point foods list might be completely different than somebody else's. And I think last count there were 700, and, if I'm not mistaken, there were like 720,000 different combinations of food lists. So. It's, if you go to your zero point food list, it's gonna pull that up. It also has a non-starchy vegetable list, just in case you need a refresher to go back and um, check something on that. And it has a list for restaurants. So that's gonna be under that track food section under lists. Also, you need to check out the new create section. So when you go to that, to your main screen, there's a little, well, on the, on the iPhone, and I don't know what it looks like on an Android, but on the iPhone, there's a little blue stripe it's about just below the very top thing that says my day. So if you go there, it's the main header bar um, under track food um, and hint, it looks a lot like you're gonna find the, tr the create food. You're gonna, it looks a lot like a pot with a lid on it and a pencil sitting next to it. So that's what the icon's gonna look like. And maybe I can get Jessica to post that um, when she posts this on if you have an egg.com. And um, you can, in case I didn't say that, like a hundred times already, you can always go back and see all of the previous chats and this week's chat Casey will post them on YouTube, so you can watch them later on youtube.com, um, search if you have an egg, and Jessica will post the transcripts from that. Hello, Barbara from the Crossroads. Um, and also, Jessica will post the written notes, so you can print those out. You don't have to sit here, if you're new, you don't have to sit here and hardly take notes. You can go, um, she will um, print those, she's typing up what I'm saying, and she will um, have those so that you can print those out. But maybe I can get her to put that little logo there, but it looks like a pot with a lid and a pencil. And um, that's going to be um, under create. And under create, you can um, quickly create a food. So like if you need to create a new food, a recipe, a meal, if you're going to create a meal, if it's something that you eat frequently, you need to create it as a meal, you can do that there. Um, if When you get there, you're going to notice that on that blue bar, that weekly planner and what's in your fridge are now gone from that. So you can't, I kept trying to scroll over and you can't scroll over anymore. You can still get to both of those. That's the weekly planner and what's in your fridge. You can still get to both of those under my day. So you just go back to the my day tab and you can get to those. And then the last thing, and Trish just mentioned it, um, a super new feature and a super new feature, and I'm still playing with it. It's called multi-track. And you can track multiple items at one time instead of hunting for each one. So always before I would type in like, you know, my Oikos yogurt, I would type in Oikos, I would find the flavor, track, coffee, track, um, grapes, track, whatever I was tracking. Now you can multi-track. So you're gonna go to, um, when, you're, when you're on this part where you track, you're just gonna tap multi-track and then you're gonna choose a meal time. So you click, you touch multi-track first, then choose whether it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, whatever the meal time is. And then, tick, 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 and you can multi-track and it'll track them all together. Okay, so that's all the news for this month, other than, or this week, uh, for the beginning of December, other than um, the entire, the theme for this month is called Find a Balance. And we are gonna spend the entire month of December um, finding ways to change, aloha Kathy, we're going to spend the entire month of December finding ways to change the all or nothing, super overwhelming holiday season to a balanced and say yes to what you really want season to enjoy. Okay, so we're going to spend the whole month talking about that. Um, first, I need to know though, and hello Marlene from Florida, first I need to know though who attended an in-person workshop last week. If you were here with us live, give us some thumbs ups. So there's a little thumbs up 
icon at the bottom and I did attend an in-person workshop. So I gave myself a thumbs up. We'll see some thumbs ups if you attended an in-person workshop last week or if you attended a Zoom workshop on Connect, thumbs ups for that. And let's see some hearts. If you attended here with us live last week, or if you, oh, lots of thumbs ups, um, or if you um, watched on demand last week, so, or both. So thumbs ups for in-person and Zoom, and hearts for watching here with us live or watching on demand later. And I'm seeing lots of hearts and thumbs ups. And I did both, I kind of have to be here with us live. So I'm gonna do a heart. Okay, yeah, and Sharon says she wishes that there, were, there are none there locally that meet her schedule. So you can just keep meeting with us on Sunday nights. We will, be, we will be your accountability group. Um, so bravo to everyone who on Thanksgiving week. So I wish I could give you all actual Bravo stickers. Y'all, you went to, in case you aren't from around here, y'all means all y'all. So y'all, y'all, you went to a meeting, you went to an in-person workshop, or you went to a Zoom workshop, and you attended here with us live last week or watched it on demand, on Thanksgiving week, bravo. So y'all need to give each other bravo stickers. That is fantastic. That's fantastic for having that kind of accountability and taking that kind of time for yourself on a holiday week. So again, extra bravo. Look, hi bravos. Hi bravos for everybody. Those are, they're your virtual bravo stickers. We do still have bravo stickers you can print out on if you have an egg.com if you would like to print them out and stick them on something. Okay, so again, we were talking about this month. The theme is find balance. So we're finding ways to find balance during a super, super busy holiday season. And it's weird. Oh, Belinda's bottom was in a green chair again. Um, I think it's going to be even more busy this holiday season because of the lack of being able to do things last holiday season. So just go ahead and comment below if you did not go to any holiday events last year, but you have overbooked this year. Hello, Chris. So if you did none last year, that would be me. And if you have overbooked yourself this year, also me. Also me. So we have three Thanksgivings. And y'all already know we've got Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Casey's birthday, Alyssa's birthday, Alyssa and Alan's wedding anniversary, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. That's seven. I just counted seven holidays in which we are, you know, oh, Carol, how do you say that? Oh, yens. Yens? Oh, yeah. Yens and y'all. Okay, so apparently I got to throw that in too because I'm nubby. And hello, Vicky, in case I didn't say anything. Um, but anyway, so we've got all, all of that. We have seven. So that's seven things that we will be expected to participate in or around. And we have, and today's already the fifth of December. So we're going to be talking about how to balance that. So last week, though, during chat number 250, and we were talking about decoding your eating pattern, which I think is extremely important for me because I eat differently during the winter and I really eat differently during the holidays than I do any other time of the year. So last week we were talking about, you know, eating, again, eating different seasonally. Um, so if you have a different eating pattern, if you if your eating pattern is different, um, oh my gosh, Melinda says, I had my caboose in a burgundy cushion chair. Oh, it was a meeting she visited after her doctor's appointment. That's awesome. Oh, we need big cushy burgundy chairs. I think we better talk to Gwen about that. But anyway, so last week we were talking about decoding your eating pattern, which I think is very important to realize how you eat seasonally um especially if you know during the holiday season if you're if your eating pattern changes you know mine's very different over this you know kind of mm, not quite two month period and then it is the entire rest of the year my activity is you know is very different and the foods that i choose are very very different you know during this season of the year but if you can recognize um if you can recognize those patterns you know and kind of figure out what to do with that and kind of and how to handle that it's going to help you glide through the holidays so we talked about a couple of things um one of them was the frequency so if the frequency that you eat changes and a lot of you all said that um with the shorter daylight so most of us are in are in areas that and we do have some people in other countries but most of our us are, um, are in areas that are shorter, you know, we're having shorter hours of daylight right now. And no, Barbara, sadly, we are not gonna get to go this month. We have a new grandbaby. Bo can't go to Disney yet. So as soon as she's big enough, we are headed that way. But anyway, um, I digress. So sometimes 
if the hours are shorter, I find myself and I've seen other people waiting too long to eat. So if you're that person that's waiting too long, it, that might be a destructive pattern, um, you know, because you're getting, you know, you're getting too hungry or too snacky if you've waited too long for you. Now that doesn't mean too long for everybody. Uh, my friend Popcorn Karen does not get, she does not get going until about 11 or 12 o'clock every, every day, but she's also up until midnight or one o'clock every day working. So her day starts a lot longer. And hello, Terry. But her, I mean, her day starts a lot later than the rest of us. I don't know how she handles these shorter, shorter hours. I have no idea because, I mean, she works really long days. Anyway, so that probably changes her eating habits. Um, if you find yourself snacking all day, you know, some ways to handle that. Um, variety. So I found a, I think it's pronounced kabuka, a kabuka squash at Trader Joe's. Y'all are gonna, yuns, y'all are gonna have to tell me how to, how to use that. I still haven't cracked into it because I don't know what to do with it. But I'm super excited that it is a new, new to me seasonal squash. And that delicata squash should be coming out soon because that is a winter squash. Um, root vegetables like turnips and beets and things like that are coming in. Um, carrots and parsnips are back in. Um, clementines, kiwi. I'm still looking for some good blood oranges. I haven't found any yet. Um, blood oranges and caracara. I'm on the hunt for this. Um, and then finally, preparation, prep, preparation, prep, 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 prep. Even though I'm not a big prepper, um, I think preparation is extremely important. Um, you know, when they're shorter, you know, shorter days, um, the hours are shorter because, um, you know, you just don't have as much time to do things. And I'm serious, when the days are shorter like this, I would much rather it be dark in the morning. Kabuka, kabuka, Lynn, Lynn has spelled it for me, kabuka. Am I saying that correctly? I have no idea. Um, Y'all finally taught me how to say feta and something else that I was mispronouncing. Anyway, so I think it's kabuka squash. Um, but prepping, you all know I'm not a big prepper, but if I do not already have some things prepped, um, some, you know, some things prepped and ready to go, it ain't gonna happen when I get home. So you're pro some of y'all are gonna kill me. Some of y'all are gonna agree with me and some of y'all are gonna, going to not be very happy with me, but I need them to change. And I don't know who them is, but whoever is in charge, I need them to change it so that it is dark in the morning and then light in the afternoon. So not the schedule that we're on right now. So whatever the opposite of this is called, I guess, is that called? Are we on daylight savings time right now? Or would that, or would that be the other schedule? Whatever the schedule is when it's dark in the morning, I'm okay with that. You know, I expect it to be dark when I get up in the morning. So dark in the morning, and then light later in the afternoon. So I'm gonna need them to switch it back to that and just leave it alone, okay? Okay, so preparation though for me, I've got bagged salads ready to go. Um, I've been stocking up across the street from Casey Kitchen Center over at Food City. I've been stocking up on some of my favorite bagged salads. Um, I've been adding things to them like hard boiled eggs, um, chicken that I've already cooked and have in the freezer, um, other zero point things, you know, things that are zero points for me. And so far everybody's agreeing with the different time thing. So let's do it. Let's just make it happen. Um, microgreens, we have friends that are growing microgreens here in Knoxville. Actually, they're in Seymour and it's called Little, Little Row Farms. I've been hashtag bulking it up everything, but having that prepped and then having the soup that I made two weeks ago in my little super cubes and having that prepped and ready to go, that's fantastic for me because when I get home and it's already pitch black outside, I don't wanna make anything. So I'm trying to avoid sitting down with just a bag of microwave popcorn for dinner, okay? So prep, prep, prep. So last week your homework was hashtag soups on. So I just mentioned soup. Um, soup, I think, is a fantastic way to have food ready. I think it's a fantastic way to kind of soothe you, you know, when the when it's getting dark um, sooner and just to have it ready because you can freeze it, keep it on hand, you know, and everybody loves it. This week though, for your homework. So your homework this week was hashtag soups on and Okay, Terry, I eat them in two days. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna sidetrack just a second. Terry said, how do you keep the bag salads from going bad so fast? I eat them in two days. I literally split it in half and eat them in two days. And they're between six and eight points um, for the ones that I'm eating, but I bulk them up so much. It's a huge meal. It is a huge meal. Okay, all of the Bravos that I'm gonna mention um, tonight for the soups on homework, go to the ladies over on Connect. So if you're on WW and if you're on Connect, they knocked it out of the park this week, okay? So all three of them are gonna be from Connect. First of all, we have at Life's Little Pleasure. So I'm telling you what their handle is on Connect in case you want to go follow them. And if you go to follow them, um, please, oh, I left something in the refrigerator. I just realized, Vicki said put paper towels in the container. I just realized I left something in the refrigerator. We're gonna need in a few minutes. Okay, I'll circle back around to that. But if you want to go follow them, please be sure and tell them Kelly said hi. If you go to follow them, but at life's little pleasure. So it's the at sign on connect. It's the at sign and then 
life's little pleasures. So she bought soup mugs last week, and then she shared a yummy skinny taste recipe. It was beef, tomato, and Ancini di Pepe. Ancini di Pepe. So is that French? Is that, I don't think it's Italian, maybe. Um, but anyway, so she shared that di pepe soup. So it was beef, tomato, and Ancini di pepe soup. Um, she even shared the link to the recipe builder. So she gets an extra bravo for that. And I did it, I clicked on it, and it went right to me right there, and I was able to adjust it, adjust the um, quantity, and um, save it to mine. So that was perfect. Then, um, at V-Z-I-N-M-A. So it's at V-Z-N-M-A. So I'm assuming she's in Massachusetts. Um, she did hashtag soup for breakfast. So she made her favorite soup, but she made it for breakfast. And it is a lentil and black bean soup with smoked chicken sausage. And I have to tell you, I never thought about eating soup for, for breakfast, but when I saw her recipe, sign me up. It looks so good. And then at 25 Finn Hawaii. So it's the number two, five, Thin Hawaii. Um, she loves um, a recipe from, I guess it must be a local eatery called Anderson's, and it's Anderson's Original Split Pea Soup. So when she's in their restaurant, she loves that, loves it. Um, but she said they share the recipe with everybody. She said it's not a secret recipe. They've shared it with everybody. And she said you can just Google it. So yes, V-Z-I-N-M-A, you are correct, Sharon. Um, but she said if you, if you Google Anderson's, and it's A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N, Anderson's, original split pea soup. She said, if you Google it, it'll take you straight to their recipe. And it's not, it's not a secret. You know, it's just a, it's, they've published it for everybody. Um, and you can Google it. And it's an easy, and it's a vegan recipe. So if you're vegan or if you're vegetarian, or if you're just looking for something meatless, um, you can do that one. So it's an easy, vegan, warm meal. But bravo to everyone who did their homework. Good job, ladies. Y'all did your homework on the week of Thanksgiving. I'm so proud of you. Okay. So we're going to have to talk fast. I always talk fast. This week though, we're talking about move, move your way to a better mood. So, I mean, as soon as Gwen said that last week, I was like, really, we're gonna talk about exercise this week? Okay, sure, go ahead. But that's not what we're talking about. So we're talking about shopping, decorating, hello, everybody. we're talking about shopping, decorating, deadlines, family coming over, travel. There are lots of things that need to get done and a lot of excuses to be in a, full, in a foul mood about it, okay? And if you're sitting over there polishing your halo saying, I don't, I'm not ever in a bad mood. It's the holidays. I'm always happy during the holidays. Then you just keep polishing that halo, okay? Because um, the rest of us, the rest of us, even just have, for the rest of us, even just a little bit of movement, just a little bit can bust that bad mood or it can even clear a little brain fog when you need it, if you know what I'm talking about. So here are some just very simple, short, they don't have to take a long time, ways to bust, to move a little and bust a mood. And the first one is brain fog. I just mentioned brain fog. That happens to me a lot. So, I mean, you know what I mean. You're making lists, you're making all these lists, holiday lists, card lists, you're checking them twice, um, or you've got a work deadline that absolutely has to be done before your holiday vacation in years past. And Barbara nailed it when she, you know, when she asked if we were headed down to Mouse Land um, this month. We are not, sadly. Normally we were headed down to Disney World um, around Christmas time. So sadly we are not, but happily it's because we have a new grandbaby and we'll just take her with us next time. We'll leave our parents here. Just kidding, just kidding, Casey and Ellen, if you're listening. Um, but usually the, the couple of weeks before, so I'm trying to get all the holiday stuff done and the couple of weeks before we leave, I have little, I have like a post-it note wall going of things that have to be finished. So, you know, you know, when your brain has reached that fog level, when even having Rudolph himself with a shiny red nose to lead you, it's, you've hit that status. You've hit that status of you've got to have a red-nosed reindeer to get you out of this fog, okay? So, and Melinda says her horns are always holding up her hand. So here are some things to do when you've hit that brain fog where you just, you're maxed out, you're done. You can't, you can't do anything else. So take your laptop or your, and yes, Vicki, shampooing your carpets actually does, that actually does count. I didn't specifically say that, but you just did your homework. Okay, so hold on. So take your laptop, your card list, your wrapping paper, whatever you're doing, and move it to a different spot. Just literally, just carry it to a different spot and then stand up for about 15 or 20 minutes while you're working on it. I didn't say you had to stand up for an hour, an hour and a half. I didn't say you had to walk in place while you're doing it. Literally just move whatever you're working on. If you're making a Christmas list, if you're checking things off, just move them to a different area, just away from where you were, 
um, and stand up for about, you know, 50, say 10, 15, 20 minutes of that, okay? I promise the brain fog will go away because you're in a different spot and you're standing up. Um, take the dog for a quick walk. You know, that one's always a popular idea. If you don't have a dog, take somebody else's dog for a quick walk. I promise you the dog will love it and your brain will too. And get away from your get away from your work. So just walk away. I know like uh, Carol, you work at home, right? And I know for sure Orlando Debbie works from home. So just get away from get away from your work. Maybe do some toe touches. Do something. Stretch. Get in some countertop push-ups. You know, we, I like to talk about just getting at your countertop, you know, and doing some push-ups. So just doing something like that, it changes. It just changes your environment, it changes what you're doing and it can really, it can kind of clear away that brain fog. Okay, this one, Hallmark Movie Mood. Okay, we've been watching them for over a week now in the Casey Kitchen Center showroom. That's all we've had on the TV. So whether you love or hate the boy meets girl, girl avoids boy, we all have a wonderful life movie um, that's invading our airspace right now. The sappy stories can sometimes create moods of sadness loneliness. Um, I wish it snowed every day and all the men looked handsome without a shirt while shoveling snow and holding a puppiness. Know what I mean? It just does sometimes. So if the holidays get you down, so I know a lot of people that the holidays kind of get them, you know, they kind of get them down. Um, I'm missing my mom this year. You know, John's missing his dad. This is going to be our first Christmas without, you know, all of them. So if that's got you down, Take a stroll around your neighborhood and look at some of the lights. You know, if you're in a neighborhood where they decorate, if it's a safe place, take a little stroll around your neighborhood. John and I did that the other night. We literally just left our loft, walked to downtown Knoxville, checked out the ice skating rink and came back. We weren't gone 10 minutes, you know, but it was a nice little walk. Um, you can organize some family photos that, that have been sitting in a box. So if you miss being with your family this year, if you are working in, let's say, Bristol, UK, and you're not gonna be home for Christmas, although I think she will be, but anyway, Holly, um, organize some photos that have just been sitting in a box, you know, so just getting up and moving somewhere else and doing something else can help get rid of that Hallmark movie mood. And then finally find your favorite kid and build a snowman or have a snowball fight. How much fun would that be? I would love it if it would snow. Of course, it was 60 something degrees today, but if it would snow and Alyssa and I could get out and just make another one of our gigantic, it's only gonna last one day snowman. Okay, and then the last one is, can't do it all, so why did I sign up for this mood? Do y'all get that one? That one is a bugger. That one happens to me every year except for last year, you know, because we couldn't do anything last year. But you said yes to every party. You even offered to make some food. Your holiday list is longer. Your holiday card list is longer than the hours you have left to handwrite every single one of them. Um, the best intentions were there, but you're now more Grinch than Cindy Lou today, okay? It just happened. So try these things. So take the cards that you were going to handwrite to your bestest buddies, the people who know you the best, put those up to the side. You can send them later. I promise if they are that close to you, they will understand that you just needed to take a break and that they're going to get them as winter cards instead of Christmas cards, okay? I promise they still love you. So just set those to the side and then take a handwritten card over to a, an elderly, like walk it over, walk it over. Don't mail it. Walk it over to a hand, to, um, to an elderly neighbor or two. You know, I promise you will be just as blessed as they are by taking it over there. Or take a laundry basket and make a quick trip around your house. So take five minutes, just get a little laundry basket, take a quick trip around your house and find an object or two in each room that doesn't belong in that room. You know, it's not supposed to be in there, but you've just been avoiding it. You know, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm decorating, I'm writing cards, I'm making holiday phone calls, I'm writing a Christmas song, you know, whatever, whatever you're doing, just stop. Um, and get that little basket, go around, find those things. And e so even if you need to put them back where they're supposed to go, maybe some of those things are things that you think, why do I even still have this? Why is this even still here? This doesn't belong in this room because it doesn't belong in my house. So go ahead and make a giveaway box of the things that you don't need anymore. Decluttering your home, I promise you will declutter your mind. And then finally, walk in place for a few minutes while you scroll through the channels, away from the Hallmark channel, just kidding, Hunks of Hallmark. Hunk, hashtag hunk, or Hunks of Hallmark actually liked the what I posted about Hallmark uh, last week. Anyway, so, so walk in place while you're scrolling through the channels and find a favorite holiday movie or some holiday music or something like that. It's going to make your project move so much faster if you've got something fun playing in the bas you know, playing in the background, and it'll make your mood so much better. So that is your homework for this week. It is hashtag bust a mood, B-U-S-T-A-M-O-O-D. So hashtag bust a mood, and this week's homework earned you a badge 
and a better mood. So you get, you know, it's like, it's a double bonus there. So figure out what that small thing is that you're going to do. Just about time, Sandria. Yes, thank you. So find out what that small thing is that you're going to do and then bust a mood this season to bust a mood this season and then um, tag me in it. So you can type it, write it, take a picture of it, take a picture of yourself doing it. Thank you, Alicia. Um, and then tag me in it. So hashtag bust a mood. That is going to be your homework for this week. Okay. If you are brand new, we are getting ready to start on the second half um, of our chat. We are going to be making something tonight. It's actually already made, but I'm going to show you how to put it together. And Sharon, yes, this is, yes. So Sharon wants to know if this is every week. Yes, Sharon, this is every Sunday night at eight o'clock Eastern. And she said she's in retail, so she's not going to be able to watch every week. Yes, it is always on replay. You can um, come back here to the Facebook page. It's a, it's a public page and you can watch it. It will post as soon as we get done. This live chat will post. Um, or you can watch it on YouTube later. Yep, Terry just said you can watch it on YouTube later. Um, and that's just going to be YouTube.com. Search if you have an egg. So for those of you that are new, the um, the apron signifies the second half of our chat. So like, let's say if you got to watch the first half, the chats are an hour long altogether. Um, so if you got to watch the first half and you think, oh, you know what? Um, you know, I just need to see what was in the second half or, you know, I missed the second half or I want to see what she made or I missed an ingredient or whatever. Then um, when Casey posts these on YouTube, the full hour is going to be first. And then if you get to the second video where I just have on the apron, that's just the second half. So real quick, though, everybody get a drink of water. New people, we always stop and get some water at the halfway point. And I have gotten since the day since the day I took my um, my assessment, I have gotten my point, my one point for 60 ounces of water every single day, every single day, okay? And I've tracked every single day, even Thanksgiving day. Okay, so everybody get your water. Um, let me see. Actually, I'm gonna fix this real quick. For some reason, my camera is a little high Okay, now y'all can see what I'm working on. Okay, so anyway, this is the second half of chat number 251, um, and it was titled, um, How to Bust a Bad Mood. So the second half, though, we're gonna be talking about if potatoes are zero. So I need you to either raise your hand or I need you to comment below if you chose, um, and thank you guys, thank you, Alicia, and, um, oh, and Vicki has too. So I need to know if you chose potatoes as one of your zero point foods, I need you to comment below. And you can do that if you're watching it with, here with us live um, tonight on Sunday, December the 5th, or if you're watching later on YouTube, it's just youtube.com, search if you have an egg, thank you, Tate. Or if you're watching it later, um, when this posts to um, Facebook. So go ahead and comment and Mary, uh, Mary Ann does. So, or um, yeah, Mary Ann did. So I need to know if potatoes are zero. So I'm gonna say, when you so when you took your WW assessment for the first time, or the second time, or the 15th time, or however many times you've taken it, um, there were many opportunities to choose one or more of your favorite whole foods, and I'm going to call them whole foods um, because anything that you had an opportunity to choose as a zero point food started out as a whole food. So you didn't choose anything that was already in a box, you didn't choose anything that was already in a bag, anything that was already um, processed, you didn't choose any of that as zero point foods, okay? So if you chose, so before Thanksgiving, um, I did not have uh, potatoes as a zero point food. I had chosen um, whole wheat pasta instead because, um, and beans, because that was, the, you know, the two things that I, that are more normal, you know, for me to eat. But right before Thanksgiving, I retook my assessment and I chose potatoes as one of my zero point foods because we had lots of family gatherings coming up um, and quite simply the ease of finding things that were made with potatoes. Um, and it's everybody's favorite spud, you know, um, it just made sense for me during this season. So I retook my assessment and I chose potato. I said that I was changing um, for a seasonal, for seasonal eating um, time. And I went ahead and chose potatoes. So if you chose potatoes, then the second half of this chat is for you. If you didn't choose potatoes though, do not jump off of here. Don't tune me out, okay? Because you may find a season in your life when you need to choose potatoes, Plus, we're going to talk about some yummy potato things that even if they are points for you, you might want to know. So here are some ways. And Alicia, I know I have to be careful with potatoes too. So Alicia just said I get in trouble. I would get in trouble if it was potatoes. So 
I have the capability of doing that also. So here are some ways to avoid that and here are some yummy things to do with potatoes. So potatoes, you know, what are you gonna do with them? So, oh, yep, yeah, my Melinda says me and Mr. Spud are good friends. So what are some things to do with them? So I have, I chose two different kinds of potatoes to start this second half with. So one of these is just a russet potato and one of these is a sweet potato. So in the past, sweet potatoes um, had been a better option for me because I won't just sit and eat and eat and eat and eat and eat sweet potatoes, okay? Not gonna happen. I love sweet potatoes though, and right now they are zero points for me, and I can eat these um, just baked with a little bit of light butter, um, or if I've saved up enough points, real butter. You know, how yummy is real, real butter? Um, but baked potatoes, baked russet potatoes and baked um, golden or Yukon gold potatoes. Yukon gold are actually my favorite, but baked potatoes, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. So if you've been watching me for any length of time, you should already know this. I will never, ever, ever, never microwave another potato, okay? That, I did that the other night because I, was, I thought I was in a hurry. I threw it away. So if John is still here, you can ask him. I literally, I took like, maybe two bites of it and I threw it away, okay? It was disgusting. So a microwaved potato, if you have this option, do this. So potatoes are so much better if you do them in, whoop, wrong way, Kelly, if you do them in the air fryer, okay? If you will just stop an air fryer baked potato, if you have an air fryer or if you have two, like I have at work, or if you have four, like I own all together, I have two here, one at home and one for the camper. So we have four, we have four air fryers, but we need them. An air fried baked potato is so much better. So for a regular potato and you know, about this size, and you can, you don't have to get it this big, but a regular potato, and um, we do have a chat for that. And th there is also a recipe for this on, if you have an egg.com, you can find how to, how to um, air fry a potato. So either one of them, wash it really good, poke a couple of holes in it with a fork, set it in the air fryer and um, I wouldn't do a russet potato and a um, and a sweet potato at the same time the sweet potato is going to take a little less time to cook um, but I do it at 390 I do this for about 35 40 minutes for this size potato and then check it again with a fork um, I have always I have all, and I have always done the sweet potatoes for just a little bit less time I check them a little bit sooner but I'm telling you if you love baked potatoes at a restaurant, you've got to try them. If you have an opportunity, you have got to try them in an air fryer. And again, this is on if you have an egg.com, you can already go back and see it, or we had a we have a chat for that. So if you're new, we have, well, this is 251. So we have over 250 chats that you can go back and watch on youtube.com. And yes, I do. So Vicky wants to know if you prick the potato before air frying it. Yes, I do. I poke, I literally take, I literally take a fork and I'm not going to do it because I'm not cooking this one tonight, but I literally take a fork and go poke, poke. And then when it's done, done and you cut it. And if you all watched that previous chat, or if you've watched anywhere I've made a potato, I take a sharp knife when it's done. After I've decided that it's fully done, I take a sharp knife and I do a zigzag cut like this and then squeeze it like this. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful, it's fluffy, it makes it totally worth it. Um, it's the best baked potato that you will ever have short, um, short of a restaurant. And then you can fill it with whatever you want to. I'm gonna suggest that if you do, so a sweet potato, I do like to do sweet potatoes with, um, you know, if I've got some extra points with a little bit of butter, um, some cinnamon and sugar is good, or so you could do some cinnamon cinnamon and trivia in there is good. Marshmallow, just a couple of marshmallows is good. You don't have to add a lot to a sweet potato. They're so sweet anyway. You just don't have to add a lot to them. Um, to a russet or to a Yukon gold potato, think about it, if this is zero for you, then you can fill it full of zero point, like if chicken or turkey breast is zero for you, you could fill it full of um, chicken or turkey breast. You could put taco soup in there. You could put uh, just a little bit of cheese. You could do um, non-fat plain Greek yogurt as your sour cream. Um, I mean, there's all kinds of things that you can do with a baked potato. Okay, so that's one thing, just a plain, just plain baked potatoes is one. And I'm serious when I say, please, 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 if you have an opportunity, please try them in the air fryer. You, you will not go back. Um, I threw the microwave potato away. It was disgusting. I mean, I used to eat them that way all the time, but it was absolutely disgusting. Okay, the next way is roasted. 
I prefer, so instead of a big potato like this, if I'm gonna be roasting potatoes, I don't, I don't buy big potatoes um, for roasted them. So I buy this size and I'm gonna hold it like this. I hope you can see, you can probably see about what size these are. So this is, um, oh, okay, and sorry, Melinda's exactly right. For low points, you could go to Wendy's and get a chili and put it on top of your air fryer baked potato. I promise you, your air fryer baked potato is gonna be better. It's gonna be better than the one that you could get at Wendy's. And Sandra, I did not think of that. Sandra said to put sugar-free maple syrup on the, um, on the sweet potato. I think I'm gonna try that. Thank you, Sandra, that sounds fantastic. And I have some of that here at Casey Kitchen Center and at home, so I'll be trying that, thank you. Um, that's why we're here. You all have just as good of ideas as I do. And that's where I get a lot of my ideas is from you all. So these are little potatoes. These are called Sun. These are from Tasteful Selections and they're it's a Sunrise medley of bite-sized potatoes. So very small potatoes like this. They're about the size of a Brussels sprout. Um, those are great for roasting. Um, Alicia, those are great for roasting. Um, again, you can roast those in the air fryer and you can roast them on a cookie sheet. If you've seen any of those, um, like those cookie sheet or sheet pan, I think they're called sheet pan recipes. Um, people will put chicken or turkey or fish, if fish is one of your zero point foods, and then put some vegetables and put, um, and then put some of these bite-sized potatoes on there. And if they're still just a little bit big, you can cut them in half first, spritz them with a little bit of olive oil. You can use the, I never know which way to point. Hold on. Evo, you can use your Evo sprayer like this and spritz it with a little bit of olive oil or whatever your favorite kind of oil is. Um, you can do that. And then put your favorite seasoning on there and roast them. Ah, my gosh, those are so good. This is also the right size to do the smashed potatoes. So if you've seen any of, any of the recipes where people are cooking their potatoes, then they're taking a heavily leaded, like a, like a heavy glass or you know something heavy, and then squish them like that, kind of smash them. And they're doing smashed potatoes like that. Those are also fantastic. Um, I've got a recipe for that, and I think Pound Dropper does as well. Um, but smashed potatoes are, are awesome. And this size potatoes, they are also, well, they make really good mashed potatoes too, if you wanted to take the time to do that. But these are also really good if you quarter them. So if you take these little potatoes, little ones like this, um, it's colorful and fun and delicious if you quarter them and then add those to your soup. So if potatoes are zero, if potatoes are zero for you, I would add them to your soup too. So that's a good way to do, you know, to add some smaller potatoes um, to your meals. Okay, soup. I just said soup. So you can add potatoes to your soup. So there are a lot of different ways to add potatoes um, to your soup. You can do, you can do these, like I just said. You can buy frozen potatoes. You can add those into your soup. Um, when I do not have um, potatoes on my zero points list, then I avoid the bagged soup mixes that have like, it's like carrots, peas, celery, and, and chopped potatoes. So and they have little potatoes in them. I usually avoid those if I don't have potatoes on my list. But hey, if potatoes are zero for you, you can, yeah, you can totally do that. And Vicki said, OMG, potato soup. And I think Pound Dropper right now has a creamy potato cheese soup. And I've seen a loaded potato soup this season. Um, oh yeah, and Carol has uh, potatoes with her breakfast most mornings. And we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. Carol's like psychic also, if y'all didn't know that. So she usually announces what I'm gonna talk about before I ever get there. Okay, so different ways you can do it, you know, put it in soup. Um, potatoes are a great way to hashtag bulk up soup if it's a zero point um, vegetable for you. Um, and even if it's not, it is still, it's still a great way to bulk up your soup. Okay. I'm gonna breathe for just a second. Okay, I'm gonna slow down for just a second. So the next thing is fun finds. I always forget about these things when, when I don't have potatoes on as a zero point food. So I went back to the grocery store, um, so went through, you know, scan everything. We talked about this the first week. So the very first week, and I don't remember what chat number that was, but when we were talking about, um, you know, the new personal points plan and talking about the personal points engine and how it was gonna calculate all these things so that you have a calorie deficit and that you are losing weight, which I will say, I'm definitely losing weight. Um, I can tell, I'm not gonna flash you all, but I can tell because I can, I can see this again. So when I can start to see my collarbone, that's how I know, that's how I know whatever the scale says, the scale says, but I know I'm headed on the right track when I can see 
when I can see and feel, like I can feel my collarbone. So that means I am losing weight. Um, that is a non-scale victory for sure. So, um, but back when we were talking about personal points when it first started and we were talking about the careful calculations to make sure that you are in a calorie deficit, um, that also means that you've got to take a tiny bit of responsibility in this and that when you, when I say if potatoes are a zero point food for you, that you're going to eat a serving of potatoes and then eat another serving of potatoes if you're still hungry, okay? So that doesn't mean that you can get, you know, a two pound potato. If you're, if you live in Knoxville and you know what Buddy's Barbecue is, I have no idea where they eat these potatoes from, but they are, they're, I'm not kidding, they're that big. So this is, this is actually a pretty big potato, but this is what I would eat. This is the size that I would eat, if you can see, how it fits in my hands. That's it. That is what I would eat if I was going to eat a like a loaded baked potato. And again, stuff it with chicken breast. You know, chicken breast that I've already cooked, and a little bit of cheese, some non-fat plain sour cream, or not fun fat plain Greek yogurt as my sour cream. Um, you can put some chives in there, a little bit of bacon, you know, something like that. But that's what and broccoli, broccoli with a little bit of cheese on it. Mm -mm -mm. That's the size I would get. But I always forget when I'm not doing potatoes as zero points and go through and scan everything that some of these things are zero points already. So one of the things that I forget about, plain, plain old diced um, hash, hash brown potatoes. So you can get diced or you can get shredded hash brown potatoes. Check it, scan it because one of the brands already had oil and some kind of non-caking agent and something added to it. It had points. This is plain old, it's just Orita diced hash brown potatoes. And it literally has, oh yeah, Lynn says McAllister's does too, I forgot about that. Um, but this one literally just has, the ingredients are potatoes. Potatoes, dextrose, sodium acid, pyrophosphate to retain the cold. Excuse me, so I forget about that. So plain old hash brown, little cube, tiny cubed potatoes, and um, shredded hash browns. If you get the ones that have nothing added, they are zero points. So Carol was talking about adding them to her breakfast. Um, um, Melinda was just now talking about it. Um, let's see, oh, Carol gets the O'Brien's one, O'Brien that has the that has peppers and onions already in it. Um, and she adds extra pe peppers to hashtag bulk it up. She knows how much I love that. Um, but these are fantastic. And we're actually gonna make something with these here in just a few minutes, but don't forget about that. So you can add a little bit of potatoes. That would be good to add into some soup. You could make some potato soup with this, just saying. Okay, so that's for the diced or for the shredded hash browns. I gotta keep an eye on the time to make sure. Also, I don't, I don't make, I make mashed potatoes and everybody loves my mashed potatoes. They love them. But I have never, ever, never peeled, chopped up, boiled and made mashed potatoes. I always use cheater mashed potatoes, okay? So I made these for Thanksgiving and they were gone. They nearly all of them um you can use these are just and these don't they don't have to be a rod of brand you can get you know whatever brand oh yeah and lynn's exactly right simply potatoes is in the um it's in just the refrigerated section it's not the frozen section and they also have some that have nothing added to them and are zero points um these happen to be across the street at food city you can get whatever brand you can get as long as it's just potatoes so these are also errata in their home style steam and mash this is these are real potatoes. This is not dehydrated potatoes. They're just already cut up and ready to go. I literally poured three bags of this into a crock pot and then added, added everything else that I was going to use to make loaded mashed potatoes and they made themselves. Okay. So you can find that on, if you have an egg.com, you can find my loaded mashed potatoes recipe is on there and it's regular or vegan. So you can find it both ways. So this is an absolutely fun find. I love these. Um, they're just so easy. They're so stinking easy. Um, also, Skinny Taste has a scalloped or rotten potatoes recipe, and you can just go to, hello, Hattie. You can just go to skinnytaste.com and search scalloped or rotten, and you'll find those there. That's a great way to use potatoes if they're a zero point food for you. Um, like I mentioned before, Pound Dropper has a creamy potato cheese soup. It's fantastic. Um, if it's soup time for you, and for our last few minutes, I'm gonna show you how to make a super easy air fryer potato omelet bake. So this is gonna make, this serves two. Um, this is not, I'm not encouraging you to eat this whole thing as a single, okay? As, a, as one 
um, as one serving. This is a two serving thing, okay? So don't get excited or simultaneously, oh, what are you doing, you know, when you see this? So this is for two, this is two servings. And this will be posted maybe Monday, but likely by Tuesday on ifyouhaveanegg.com. So in the air fryer, you can use anything that you can use in the oven. So you can use silicone. Um, these happen to be little ceramic, um, let's see, what are they called? They're Temptations Presentable Ovenware. Um, so it's just a nice little size. You can use whatever size you want to. Just make, some, make sure it's something that's okay to put um, in your air fryer. And so to make these, and again, you're just you're just gonna make a serving for two. So you can either share this with um, with a spouse or a friend or your favorite kid before you go out and make that snowman. Like we talked about earlier, you can do that. Um, or you can um, save half of it, you know. And Vicki wants to know if I'm eating lunch now. So Vicki, I have a new girl, her name is Kendall. And Kendall, if you were watching this, cause she just figured out that we actually do this. Like. She's a month in, and then she saw she saw if you have an egg.com and she was like, wait, so this is like a thing. And I said, Yeah, this is like a thing. Because we sell countertops during the day. That's our non-superhero power. But anyway, so she's so yes, Kendall has been here a month now. She's been here a little over a month now, and it's working out well. I'm it still has, has to be really quick, but yes, I am eating lunch at work now. It's not fancy and fantastic, but I am eating lunch. Okay, first thing you're gonna do is take a cup. This is one cup of the diced hash brown potatoes. So whichever brand you decide to get, or you can use the shredded ones if you want to. So you're gonna just add a cup um, to a bowl. Then you're gonna add two eggs. And these are just regular cage-free, brown, free-roaming, happy bottom chicken eggs, or happy, happy chicken bottom eggs. Okay, and pour that in there. You can use egg whites if you want to. If you don't want to use eggs, you could use one egg and then, you know, some egg whites. You're gonna put that in there. Then this is what I thought I did not get out of the refrigerator, but apparently I did. So I needed some quick um, fat-free cream cheese. Um, I have stopped buying fat-free cream cheese. There's really no reason to buy it when you can make it this easy. A couple of people mentioned a coffee filter, so I did that this time, and it worked fantastically. This has only been in the refrigerator um, for a few hours, and um, it's perfect. It's already cream cheese. Let me, oop, I just spilled. Okay, let me show you how good this is. And I'm yes, I'm using the spoon that I just dug in the um, egg with, but nobody's going to eat the rest of this. So look at that. Do you see how thick that is? Let me get over here. Well, you can't see it because my apron's white too. Look at that. That is cream cheese. So I have successfully made fat-free cream cheese in a mesh coffee filter and a coffee mug in about four hours. Okay. Um, overnight is better, but look at all that liquid that came out of there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway, so you're going to put whatever your desired amount of fat-free cream cheese is. That was about a third of a cup. Um, I'm going to do a fourth of a cup of Velveeta shreds, just original Velveeta shreds, because those are lower in points. And I'm going to do about a fourth of a cup of um, 90, I think it was 98 or 99% fat-free diced ham. I'm going to do a sprinkle of Bragg Nutritional Yeast. And if you don't know what Bragg Nutritional Yeast is, you've got to go back and watch that chat. There's like 20 of them. But that is what that is, Bragg Nutritional Yeast. And it is chock full of vitamins. Absolutely delicious. I don't know why I'm still standing here shaking it. Yes, Vicki says, or Canadian bacon. Exactly right. Um, and then you're going to do, oh, and I'm sorry, on the fat-free cream cheese, that is already on if you have an egg.com, so you can go there and find that recipe. So stinking easy. And that is so much cheaper than buying fat-free cream cheese, and I can make it however much I want. So I literally made enough to make two of these, and that's it. I did not have to buy, like, a block of cream cheese. And then you're going to put your favorite seasoning in there. And uh, tonight I'm using Dax Italian Blast. And if you want to, you can, and you're gonna stir it up. And if you want to, you can add all kinds of veggies. You could put um, zucchini and squash would be really good in this. Onions would be good in this. Um, peppers, all kinds of vegetables would be good in this. So you can hashtag bulk it up. You're gonna get all of that good mixed together. So you can see we literally made this in what? five minutes because it's like seven till. 
So we just made all this in like, oh, it's like five till. So we just made all this in like five minutes. The longest part is gonna be waiting on it to cook in the air fryer. When you get done, when all this is stirred together, sorry, when all of this is stirred together and you get whatever veggies you want in there. So if you want mushrooms, again, I'm thinking zucchini. I'm thinking zucchini and squash. I don't know why, but all of a sudden that's what I'm thinking about putting in this. Um, but whatever veggies you wanna put in there, you know, make them kind of small, make them about the size of the potatoes. So you can kind of see here what the, whoop, let me get out of the way because my white apron. So the little of the diced um, potatoes. So if you make the veggies about the same size, then it's gonna cook up nicely. And then you're gonna take, this is for this size, and this is gonna make two, I'm gonna say this is probably a two cup um, little thing. You know, it's probably gonna make one cup of each, but this is safe to use in the air fryer. You're gonna mix all that together, put, um, ooh, and Carol, this is asparagus is good with eggs. That is good with eggs. Um, you could, I could have put salmon in here and done salmon and eggs. But anyway, spray this lightly with some nonstick spray, pour that in. You're gonna put that in your air fryer on 300 because we're trying to cook the eggs, but we're trying not to let it get too brown. So I will say this, an air fryer is not, it's not one-to-one -one temperature and time-wise from an oven. So start lower and um, start lower with an air fryer. So if it says 360, try like 320 or you know something lower. So you're gonna put this in the air fryer on 300 for um, 25 minutes and then take it out at 25 minutes and kind of check it. And you'll, I'm gonna show you what it looks like done. So you'll know if it's absolutely, if it's actually done, but check it at about 25 minutes. And like with my air fryer, I needed about five more minutes to make it, you know, finished. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you're done. And I did not put any veggies in this one just for the sake of time and because I'm probably gonna take this one home to John, but this is what it looks like when it's done. So it is a little, um, so it's just a little casserole. So it's a little breakfast casserole and it's got those little potatoes. It's got a little bit of cheese. It's got the um, nutritional yeast, some seasoning and the making the cream cheese just makes, so making the fat-free cream cheese makes it feel like it has more cheese than the actual cheese that I put in there. But it is absolutely delicious. I've already tried it, but I'm gonna try it for you all again. Um, so since this is zero, um, since the potatoes are zero points for me, this is gonna be a really low point um, option for me. And you could use whatever kind of protein, you don't have to make it um, something with meat. Mm. If you like hash brown casserole, this would be really good with garlic in it. Again, I'm thinking zucchini and squash. So there are a few things that you can make if potatoes are on your zero points list. I hope you all found something that you like. I'm gonna show you one more thing real quick. I'm done cooking. If you are watching this on YouTube, please go ahead and let the next video roll over. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe here and check that little bell so that you'll know when the next, so that you'll know when the next um, video comes up. But really quickly, before we go, I wanted to say, we, I had so many people ask about my coffee mug the last couple of weeks. So I wanted to say really quickly, the girl who made them, she brought me some more mugs. I have this one looks the closest to my mug and I will post pictures of these. Um, they'll be on Casey Kitchen Center on the Casey Kitchen Center Instagram. So if you just find, look at that one. Is that not stinking cute? That one is so cute. Her business is called Open Kiln and it's just a little local business. Look how pretty that one is. These are so pretty. So she brought me all the mugs that she had left. So here are the rest of them. All these pretty blues. Here's a little tiny one. If no one buys this one, I'll probably get that one. I don't know. That one just is so cute. That one is beautiful. They're all so pretty. Anyway, so she brought me the last of her mugs. And for those of you asking about the tea, we have allergy tea. These are Tanya Ree. She is a licensed herbalist. We have allergy tea, gut soothing tea, Bubba's Blend, Scruffy City Chill, Immunity. So like for your immunity. She's hilarious. Cleanse tea. So for those of you that are doing cleanses in between your holiday meals, she's got a cleanse tea, Bubba's pumpkin patch, chocolate tea. So it's a chocolate flavored tea and market square memory. So I'm not gonna bore you all with that anymore, but for those of you who asked, I do have the rest of the mugs. The mugs are anywhere from 15 to, let's see, 15 to I believe 25. And again, I'll post those on Casey Kitchen Center. I'm not gonna junk up the, 
not junk up, but I'm not gonna fill up the If You Have an Egg Instagram with pictures of the mugs, but there, look at this one, oh my gosh. Okay, I keep picking this one back up. Look how pretty that is, and that one's 15. And yes, we can ship them. So I'll put those on the KC Kitchen Center. It's just the letter K, the letter C, Kitchen Center Instagram, if y'all wanna go over there and check that out. They're not on there yet, but I will try to get those on there um, tomorrow. But again, thank you all very much for being here. I hope if um, potatoes are on your zero points list, that you've learned something, found something, that you've got a great idea. Um, if they're not on your zero points list, I hope you still enjoyed it. So y'all have a great week. I will see you next time. Dusty is trying to decide whether or not he is going to eat the scrambled bake. So I'm not gonna pick him up because he's a little too excited about what we got up here on the island. But y'all have a great week. I had another good time and I will see you next time. See you next week. Don't forget to do your homework. Good night.